Hello, welcome to lesson 14 of the Learn Swift for Beginners series. In this video, you're going to learn about properties, which is something that we have been using already together uh, since the classes lesson, but we haven't formally introduced them yet. So this video is for that. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to show you some other cool things you can do with properties that you can't do with variables. Okay, so let's get started. So here I have a playground which defines two classes, blog post and person. And you might recognize this from previous lessons. And in both of these classes, we've defined some variables here. Well, properties are nothing more than variables that are associated with a class like this. So for example, in this blog post class, I have a title property, body, author, and number of comments. And if I create a brand new blog post object from this class, let's say, let uh, my post equals new blog post like that. And then in order to access this title property, I would use the dot notation. I would say my post dot title, and I'm going to assign something to this property. And let's just call it title of post like that. And in order to retrieve that value from that property, I would just use dot notation again. And this would return the value inside that property. So you can see that a property is just like a variable where it stores a value and you can retrieve it. But I don't know if I mentioned this before, and that is that properties are independent uh, between objects. So remember, we have defined this blog post class right here. And from this class, we can create many blog post objects. For instance, here, I've created a blog post object, and I've assigned it to my post. Now let me create a second blog post object. Uh, I'm going to call this my post two. And I'm going to create a brand new blog post object from there. So I have assigned title of post to the title property of this guy right here right, that doesn't affect my new blog post object. So I can assign my post to dot title equals another title like that. And if I display this title, you can see that it shows another title. So the properties are really variables that are attached to uh, the blog post objects that I create. And although each blog post object has a title property, uh, the values that they store are independent of one another. Okay, so the second thing I wanted to point out with properties is that when you're working inside your class, so let's say we're working on this blog post class and we create some functions here. Uh, let's say add comment, you know, we're gonna create a function like that. And we're going to create another function, maybe called um, share share article. Okay, these don't really have to do anything. I'm just I just need to create two functions for the sake of creating two functions to demonstrate this purpose. Okay, so just disregard what what I'm calling them because they're not really going to do that function. Okay, so what I wanted to point out is that these properties that you define inside the class they can be accessed um, inside any of the functions inside that class. So inside add comment, you know, I might be performing some code to add a comment uh, and I would be able to access, let's say, um, you know, I can print title or something like that, right? That would access this guy. Well, actually that's an optional. So uh, using what we learned, let me just force unwrap it. Um, but my point is, is that I can access these properties here, you know, or I can print, let's say, body, for example, you know, uh, and here, likewise, I can also print body right, within all of the functions inside this class, I can access any of these properties up here, and I can set them too from within any of these functions. However, if you declare a variable inside of a function, that is what's called a local variable. And the existence of that variable 
is limited to the scope of that function. So what that means in plain English is if I declare a variable here, let's say var uh, my comment equals, you know, some comment like that, I would not be able to access this variable inside this function here. So if I try to, you know, print my comment, you're going to see it throw an error here saying that my comment was never used. Oh, wait, that's regarding this guy right here. So this is just an optimization Xcode. This yellow little triangle means that uh, it's a warning. It's not really an error, so it's fine. Xcode is just um, warning you that you declared this my comment variable and you assigned it something, but you never used it. So consider um, consider changing its name to an underscore, which which is an optimization, but we are going to use it. So Xcode is just proactive because every time you're typing code, it just scans your code and it tries to tell you about these optimizations that you can do. Okay, so that's kind of a side note. Uh, back to the main point I was trying to make, and that is if you look at this error here, un, uh, use of unresolved identifier my comment. That means that Xcode doesn't know what you're referring to when you try to print my comment here. So even though we declared it here and we assigned it inside this function, this variable, because you, you declared it inside here, is the scope of this variable or its existence is limited to whatever is inside uh, these two curly brackets. You know, it's limited to the code inside this function. Uh, if I wanted it to be accessible everywhere, you know, I would create a property um, and I would use that instead. So that's probably something you're going to get used to as you're uh, doing more coding is the scope of where you declare things. So this is called a local variable because we're declaring it inside a function. And these properties that we declare up here to hold values are accessible inside the whole class. So what that means is that, let me just delete these two functions for now. So what that means is that if you have a function that, let's say, calculates a result or performs some sort of calculation, like for example, um, add up comment total or comment counts or something like that. And the point of this function is to maybe sum up the number of comments that this blog post has. Um, and then at the end of the whatever, you know, you're performing calculations here, um, do some calculations and come up with as a result. Arrive at a result. Now, what do you do with that result, right? Um, you can either and you learn this in the functions lesson is that you can specify a return value. So this um, this specifies that when you call add up common counts, it's going to return a number for you. So now you can say, you know, return whatever the result is, whatever variable it's stored in, right? You can return it to the caller. Another thing that you can do to make it uh, accessible later on, because remember, uh, any variables that you declare inside here are local variables and they live and die inside this function here. So if I didn't do the return value route and I arrived at some sort of calculated result and I wanted to save it for use for later on, I would probably assign it to a property. So I can say number of comments equals whatever result that I arrived at. And by doing this, when I call this function, it's going to do some calculations, calculate the result, uh, the total number of comments, right? And it's going to assign it into this property. And now um, I can use the number of comments in other functions or later on. If I left it as a local variable, um, it would, again, when this function finishes, that would be lost. Okay, so that's the difference between the lifetime or the scope of property versus local variables. And now for the third thing that I want to show you in this lesson is something called computed properties. And it's one of those things that makes properties a little more special than just plain old variables here. So let me let me get rid of these two here so that we 
I'm going to start fresh and we're back to where we started in this lesson. Um, you can do what's called a computed property and what that is, is it just returns um, and what that is, is it lets you do some calculation and return a result when you call a property. So let me demonstrate here. So let's say that we have um, uh, let author equals person. Right? So there is our author and let's set the author's name to Chris Ching, which is my name. And now let's create a blog post. My post equals blog post. Okay, and now let's assign the author property of the post, right? Let's assign author into it. Now, author right here is this person, right? This person object that I created. And finally, let's set the title to, let's say, um, learn Swift for beginners. Okay, so what do we have here? We have an author object which has the name set to Chris Ching. We have a blog post object uh, with the author set to this person object that I created. And I also set the title to Learn Swift for Beginners. Now, what I wanted to show you is I'm going to create a computed property up here. I'm just going to add a comment so that just to make it stand out a little bit. So I can say var full title is a string and I'm going to open up a set of curly brackets right uh, right after it. And what I'm going to say is um, check if title and author are not nil. Check that title and author are not nil. Because title is an optional, right? And author is also an optional. And you learned about these in the previous lesson. So you know what they mean. They could return nil, which is nothing, right? When you unwrap it. So I'm going to use an if statement just to check. So if title is not equal to nil and and that's the double ampersand which uh, represents an end condition so if title is not nil and author is also not nil both of these conditions have to be true then I'm going to run this code inside then return title and remember because title is an optional string right that means I have to unwrap it to get the value inside and I'm going to use the exclamation mark to force unwrap it that means I'm going to tell Xcode I'm just going to unwrap that optional and use whatever is inside whether it's a value or it's or whether it's nil and I know for a fact that it's not nil because I just checked it up here right so I can safely and confidently do this so I'm going to say uh, by and then plus and I'm going to do the same thing with author. I'm just going to force unwrap it and use it. Okay, so let's see what it's saying here. Cannot be applied to string and person. That's right. Okay, so author is a person, right? So I can't, <laughs> I can't append a person object to the string. What I meant to do actually is uh, I meant to unwrap the author, right, to get the person object and then call its name property. So that's what I actually wanted to do. Okay, so uh, right here Xcode is complaining that missing return in a function expected to, to return a string. So this computed property here, when it gets called full title, um, it's supposed to return a string. And if title is not nil and author is not nil, it is going to return a string. But what if one of these things are nil? Uh, either or. Um, in that case, I'm just going to use the else branch here. I'm just going to return, uh, let's say, let's do another check. Else if title is not nil, oops, not equals nil, then return just the title. Oops, force unwrap that. Um, finally, if 
the title is nil, then I don't know what we can do other than return an empty string. Or let's say no title. Let's do that. Okay, so this is awesome. Now this is a computed property, and I hope you can see that from this demonstration what that means. It, it's a property where basically um, you can perform some code, you can do some calculation, you can combine a bunch of things um, and return a result, return something. So if I say down here, if I say my post dot full title, what do you think it's going to display? Well, let me print it out because it's kind of truncated over here. Let me use the print so it prints down in the console. It's Learn Swift for Beginners by Chris Ching. And I didn't have to set that, right? Because this is a computed property. This uh, full title property is calculated by grabbing the title and appending by and then appending the author name. And if we didn't have an author, so let me just um, let me just get rid of this line here for setting the author. If we didn't have an author, it would just print out the title. And if I get rid of the title and it doesn't have a title, then it's going to print no title. And that's all of this logic here in my computed property. Okay, so that's computed properties. There's also um, additional things which we won't cover in this lesson. We'll probably do another video on properties. And that is getters and setters and property observers. But um, this is a really great start to taking a look at properties. So thanks for watching. Please like the video and please subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.